Hi there, my name is Jordan Farber and I'm a sophomore at the Colburn Conservatory of Music. I'm also a proud alumni of the Young Artists Orchestra and I'm so excited to be a part of this project, bringing instructional videos to you. Today I would like to talk to you guys about vibrato, more specifically what it is, how to practice it, and how to use it in context. Vibrato is simply a musical tool that we use to enhance our phrasing and our sound. The note without vibrato sounds like this. And a note with vibrato sounds like this. Notice how when I add vibrato, the sound becomes more interesting and has a more vocal quality than without it. Although, despite the beauty that a singing vibrato can bring to the bassoon, it's also important that we learn how to phrase and play musically without it as it's very easy to use a constant vibrato to mask poor phrasing. Once you've learned how to both properly and tastefully implement vibrato into your playing, it will give more variety and beauty to the interpretation of whatever piece you may be playing. There are three primary ways that bassoon players can produce vibrato. The first is jaw vibrato, which is produced by opening and closing the jaw on the reed, bending the pitch up and down. The second movement is through your throat, you transfer the energy back into your throat using the same muscles and motion as if you're clearing your throat. Although there are many bassoonists who employ these methods successfully, I have found that in my own playing, both jaw and throat vibrato can be very difficult to control, therefore leading to an unnatural and almost forced sound. My preferred method of vibrato is through my diaphragm. This is produced through a rapid stress and release from the abdominal muscles used to support your air. If you're unsure of what muscles you use to support your air, one way to both find them and actively engage them is to tie a string very tightly around your stomach at belly button height. Once the string is tied, play your instrument while pushing your stomach outwards against the string. This should be a constant in every note that you play on the bassoon and is also used for diaphragm vibrato. Through years of practice and influence from other musicians, I've been able to develop my own daily routine so that I'm constantly bettering and challenging my use of vibrato. There are three people that have had the greatest impact on my development of this routine. My current teacher at Colburn, Mr. Richard Bean, my former teacher, Dr. Janice McKay, and Mr. Frank Morelli, the principal bassoonist of the Orpheus Chamber Orchestra. Thanks to these people, my own philosophies and concepts surrounding vibrato have grown. To begin, I prefer to pick a note in the tenor register, as this part of the bassoon requires a little bit more so air support than the rest of the bassoon, forcing you to constantly be engaged. It's important that you have a reed that is stable enough in the third or tenor register to successfully play through this exercise. Once you have a note picked, get out a tuner and a metronome. Set your metronome to 60 or slower if need be, and listen to me play through the exercise. I begin with quarter notes, then eighth notes, move on to triplets, sixteenths, and then quintuplets. that my vibrato in this exercise sounds quite wide. To start with, you don't want to worry too much about necessarily how it sounds, but more about getting the muscles necessary and the motions necessary to achieve a vibrato. As you get better and better at this exercise, you can begin to, to shorten the gap or the amplitude of how you're vibrating and make it sound a little bit more natural. I'm always using my diaphragm to achieve those pulses of air, sort of intensifying my support for a brief moment and releasing, all while maintaining steady air support. You'll also notice that my pitch during this exercise always begins in tune, or at least for the most part, goes slightly above pitch, and then back down to the correct pitch. Never above and then below, never just below. This is how you achieve the proper sound for vibrato on the bassoon. I like to practice up to the quintuplets because once you get to them, they actually sound quite natural. The 16th notes sound quite metronomic um, and a little bit robotic, but if you can get to the quintuplets at any speed around 60, 
that your vibrato will sound a lot more natural. Practice this daily, picking two or more notes on the bassoon in different registers, making sure that you're supporting your air the entire time. Once you achieve comfort and consistency with this exercise across all registers of the instrument, it's time to put your vibrato skills to the test. You can start by playing slow legato scales in a comfortable register on your instrument, vibrating, then focusing on how your vibrato leads from one note to the next, like this. Notice how my vibrato is actually pushing the direction of each note forward. You can then play with different scales and different patterns while altering your vibrato at the same time. You could try maybe a more gentle and slow vibrato. You could try a more fast and singing vibrato. There's an infinite number of ways that you could practice this. And this is how you can begin to bridge the gap between the previous exercise, which is a little bit more rigid, more metronomic, and a more musical context. Once you're comfortable with different types of vibrato in different contexts, it's time to add vibrato into your solo pieces, etudes, orchestra music, or really anything else that you may be playing. Thank you so much for watching. To finish off, I'll perform the Andante from Franz Berwald's concert piece for bassoon and piano. Be sure to pay close attention to how I implement vibrato into my sound. Think critically about how my vibrato is moving the musical phrase, and maybe the way that you would add vibrato to this piece to give it your own personal touch. Thank you, and enjoy. Thank you.